Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explore. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at custom classes and indeed uh, making a module filled with custom classes. Let's go take a look at the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and uh, it's in the code section here, right here, and then pop on down into tools. And we've already done a couple explorers on the custom library right here. But what we've done is made some changes to it. We've simplified it. Um, the, old, the old explorer videos and the old custom libraries that we had there were using the ES5 module pattern. And we've since been using the ES6 module pattern in Zim now for a couple versions of Zim. So we updated it to ES6, simplified it a bit, uh, and just made it all ES6. So m modules uh, would be stored in a library and a module holds a bunch of classes. So these would be things that you would use across multiple projects. Uh, Zim is a good example of that, except Zim is so all-encompassing that it has become, it's, the library has become a framework in a sense. So uh, you might want, though, your own code to go along with this. Um, and rather than repeat the code from one project to another, you would put that code in a module and store that in a library. Um, a library is just a term for a set of modules. Uh, that's one way to look at it. Uh, you can also have a library that's just all on its own, <laughs> I suppose. It just means it's going to hold some code that you can use across multiple projects or indeed share even for other people to use. All right, so let's see how uh, that's done. We have three different files that we're providing. One is just a very basic example that does use Zim Duo as well, though, that shows you how Zim you can use Zim Duo, which is that feature in Zim where you can have regular parameters in order or provide a configuration object with the property names matching the parameters. So we'll show you how you can set that up yourself. Um, then there's uh, a full example, and that full example has Zim Duo. Also shows you how you can use Zim V for dynamic parameters and Zim Oct for style. Uh, we show uh, a third example, which is uh, globals. Just a globals technique is really the same as the first example, but uh, just a different way to import. So here we go. Let's um, take a look at that code then, F11. So there's a zip file right here, and this zip file goes to library.zip. But if you want the old ES5 version, that's in library underscore old.zip. We haven't even provided a link, but library underscore old.zip would grab you that zip file. All right. So we're reducing this now and going in. Here's what's in that zip file. There's the library folder. It's got an app folder and a modules folder. The app folder has the plain index, the index with the globals, and the index full. And then there's modules for each of those. The module, really, it's the, the same class in a sense, primarily. We're doing this thing called a house class. We're making a house. So it's the same one in each, but uh, slightly different ways that we're dealing with them. Uh, okay, so if we take a look now at the index, that's right here. Here we are in the index. We're in a script with a type of module, and we're importing Zim. So we've been doing this uh, now for the last few versions of Zim, since Zim NFT. And there we are bringing in Zim uh, version Zim02. We, we export a default, uh, a default in, in Zim, and that's why we can import Zim from this location. That's the easiest way. We also provide global variables so that we don't even need to use the Zim namespace right here. We could just use, uh, unless ZNS is set to true. But in general, by default, uh, we can just use things in Zim, like a, make a new frame rather than new Zim.frame. So that's this one, and we've shown you a way that we can do that with globals here, but right now we've got um, a different type of export, and when we export a, a class directly, such as the house class, we can then import that house class like so within the squiggly brackets. And if we were to export a house in a car so that we could use house or car, then that's how we would do it. We would just keep on adding those up inside like so. 
All right. Um, if you had too many, say your module, you, you don't want to, you know, you're using a dozen different things. You don't want to just list these dozen things here. Then you probably want to use the globals or what we're using in the globals technique. I'll show you, show you that in a little bit. All right. Let's pop over, though, into the module right here. Here's the module that matches that. We've provided uh, an example of how you might do docs, <laughs> like the way we did docs. And then here is our export of the class house. And this extends a Zim container. So what we're going to do in this bubbling is we're just going to talk about the import and export and the, and the uh, modules stuff. We'll do another bubbling that goes and describes how we go and make the custom class inside of here. Does that sound OK? So um, here we are exporting the, the class house. And it is indeed this export on the class house that means that we can, on this side, import house within these squiggly brackets. OK, there's a variety of different ways that we can import, but this is probably the easiest and most direct. So we'll just talk about that. Now we've got a frame. And when we're ready, so this is a standard Zim template. When we're ready, we can now make a new house. Yay, because we've imported it there. And we are animating that. Then we're setting, we're going ahead and setting a property. So when we take a look at the classes later, you'll um, you'll see how we set that property up so that works. And here we are calling a method on the house. And here we are. Once it's fallen, it, it gets we we can capture an event, a fallen event. And we're making a pane. Let's see it work. So I'm open in default browser. And in comes the house, it falls, and it says too bad. I press, and in comes the house, and it falls, and that's too bad. <laughs> so there we go. Yay, it's all working. And by the way, for that to work, the module right here, the module, needs to be on the server, which it is. And this file right here probably should be in there. This is an HT access file right here with a dot in the front. And it's basically saying it allows people to look at this module. So that will avoid any uh, cores errors. Otherwise, you'll get a cores error. OK, so that's just put in the same folder as our modules are located. And that means we can locate them uh, locally from our own computer. If we didn't do that, then we would have to upload this index page to the server as well. And then it would all work from the server. But if you're trying to look at the module locally, then you need that HT access to be in there. Or well, there's uh, various ways that you can do that, but that's one way. OK, so that's included in the zip file that you, that you get. Let's go take a look at the next version then. And we'll look at the index globals HTML and the index globals module. So here's the index globals HTML. Let's type module again in our script. We're importing from Zim. And this time, we're importing mod from uh, this location, the globals location. The rest is all the same. Oh, uh, that's adjusted that. So that would be house there. OK. So the rest is all the same. The only difference is we're importing mod here. Let's go take a look at the module itself. So the module itself is making an object to start called mod. And then it's storing all of its stuff on that. So mod.house is uh, equal to a class that extends a Zim, Zim container. Uh, if we had a car that we wanted to have, then it would be mod.car is equal to a class that extends a Zim container again, probably. All right, et cetera. So uh, if we scroll on down to the bottom now, here's where we export that as the default mod. And by the way, this name doesn't really have to match this name. This is where we're importing it. This could be whatever we want, modern or M. Um, as a matter of fact, we're not even using that because we've set globals. If you don't want to set globals, the idea behind globals or not globals is it's it's a bit easier to just use the house globally like that. However, if you're working with other modules or other frameworks, other libraries, etc., they might conflict these names. So with Zim being a framework, we don't worry about it too much. And if you are using other modules with Zim, 
then there's a couple things to watch out for. Watch out for blob, watch out for window, because Zim's got a blob and a window that can sometimes overwrite the, the um, uh, JavaScript blobs, not exactly window, but um, the blob. And some other frameworks or libraries might use that. Uh, so take a look at the docs um, under Zimplify, I guess, probably is the best place to do that. Zimplify is the, the Zim method that turns all of Zim into globals. And anyway, uh, because we're a framework, we don't worry about it too much, but it depends on what you're doing here. You may want to use a namespace here. And so let's just rejig this so it uses the namespace. I'll go over to the module here, and here's the global module. And instead of saying window.house, is equal to mod.house, we'll comment that out. Now, if I upload this, just upload that, it goes, uploads to the server, and I'm going to refresh our index page here. Refresh, oh, that's the index. We want index underscore globals, enter. And this is what it gives us at 12. House is not defined, because we took away the global house here, so all we have is the house that is exported on the default mod. So if we go back into globals here, we would have to say, if we're importing that as mod, then we would say new mod.house. So if I save this up and refresh, we don't have to upload it to the server, but I just refresh. Now I have access to the, the mods house. Okay, if I call this M, like that, then this would be M. So this will be just taking whatever was exported as the default, and if it's M, that works. And I come here, and I refresh here, and we still have the house showing up, okay? If I said mod here, and refresh here, what do you think will happen? Refresh, broken. Mod is not defined, okay? So uh, I usually do keep these as the same name, as here and here just makes it easier but doesn't have to be okay and let's go back and put the globals in just make it a little bit easier and by the way um, just that technique right there of adding the globals and exporting a default for years two years we didn't use JavaScript a module format because we thought that we either had to ever force everybody to use import, like import a circle, import frame, import, import, import everything they wanted to import. We thought they had to either import it or they had to use the Zim namespace. And we didn't want them to have to do either. We didn't want them to have to use the Zim namespace and we didn't want to have them to import everything. So we searched and searched and tried and tried and we talked with two or three different developers to try and help us with a system to get these imports and exports to work and we could not do it. Finally, I kind of took it on my own hands, really drilled into it and figured out that this was all we needed to do. <laughs> but there was a whole bunch of information going around at the time. Everybody saying, do this, do that. And it all got mixed up with modules and Node, Node Package Manager as well. It's just like, oh, that's all still a mess. We still don't know if we got our modules working in Node Package Manager. Uh, we have Node Package Manager working, but uh, I don't know. Anyway. Oh my God, I think it was easier just importing scripts. <laughs> um, but whatever, here, uh, now that we've done it for a little while, we're, we're kind of comfortable with it. All we needed to do really was just store. So in Zim, you'll see at the bottom of Zim, if you take a look at the Zim uh, module, why don't we go take a peek, come up here and here's Zim 2, here's the Zim module right here. So double click. And we're importing CreateJS. We're using strict, whoa, okay. And then down here at the bottom, here's our exports. So there they all are. And that's all done automatically for us, but just that batch on the bottom allows us to export it that way. That is, if we're going to um, if we're going to do it, it depends on whether or not we've got um, 
the ZNS to true. Okay, so that was that. And let's see. Let's look at the third one now. So the third one was called index full right here. And if we're just going over the module part, then there will be less to look at because this one was a way that we can use the Zim Duo technique. So now when we make a house, we're using Zim Duo to specify the top color directly. Not only that, we're using Zim V to pass in dynamic parameters and Zim Oct for style. So um, the HTML is a little bit different here. We're still making a house that falls over. We're still importing house from our uh, modules, which should be the full one here, I think. Yep, module full. Maybe, yeah, uh, underscore full. Perhaps that wasn't tested. Um, and then here's the module full. And we come on down here. We had just been doing some rearranging of all of this stuff. So there we go. And here we're exporting class house again. So all of this works in the same way. But this class house is set up for Zim. Well, the other one was set up for Zim Duo as well, but it's also set up for style and it's set up for Zim V right here. So these extra things inside of there are set up. Otherwise, it's the same as the first example. All right, that's good. Okay, we've taken a look at how to set up our, our module and how to export the things that we want to export. And here's how we can import them. And there we are using our class that's in the module. I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been a Zim Explore. How exciting is that? Um, you guys have a great day or night, and uh, come and visit us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We'd love to see you there. Cheers. <laughs>